Hey, evening guys. My name's Evan. I'm Allie. She's Allie, and we write for theyoungfolks.com, uh, where we do uh, reviews and news on TV and movies and music and lots of giveaways. So today we're going to talk about uh, Alfonso Cuaron's uh, newest movie entitled Gravity. Because it blew me away, and I wanted to talk about it some more. And I'm particularly glad that it ended up being not only a critically well-received movie, but it actually broke records it because dominated the it, box it office. did. It actually broke a record, I believe, previously held by uh, Paranormal Activity three, and dethroned it. De dethroned. Uh, I'm glad that it ended up being a great movie because now people can't use hashtag Gravity sucks. I also. <laughs> it also is great because I mean Sandra Bullock's a really big draw in the box office and ladies. Yeah, that's true. See, I was thinking about um while watching this movie, like that um because you got George Clooney in there, where George Clooney in space, while it's a movie that tries to be uh scientifically realistic, probably the least realistic thing would have George George Clooney be in space. <laughs> um, I guess that is the most bizarre part. But the thing is, is that your main character ends up being Sandra Bullock, who is a character that has minimal experience in space and is fighting for her life. And I don't know. That combined with... Obviously, it takes liberties with science. But, but who cares? It's the closest the audience is going to get to space ever. So well, all the little astronauts need to be quiet. Because or like we people have, like Neil deGrasse Tyson, like he yeah, was complaining on Let Twitter. us enjoy it. You guys got to go to space. We don't. Well, that's the thing is that like they it's, it's dramatized in a way, but in an earnest way. And not only get, could get like younger people excited about stuff like science and space, which is something that I guess wasn't interesting to people since Toy I'm Story. I'm not excited about space now. Oh my god, I was terrified going in and I'm terrif and I was terrified walking out. <laughs> but the thing is, is that beautiful. You, you have a you have a character played by Sandra Bullock where it's kind of, you know, cool, empowering to women. Like a, a young girl can see the trailer for this and be like, I wanna be an astronaut, even that though that sounds really true. scary. That is very true. So yeah. I, my my main concern is that people in studios are gonna see how well this movie did and they're gonna be like, Great. We need more adventure movies in space. Well, that's, that's, and that's all they're going to get from it, rather than the fact that this is a movie that succeeded so well with the female lead, with a director who's well-known, but well-known around critic scenes, more so than, like, a wide audience. And it was a new original idea, and it succeeded. And that's why I hope people see this movie and studios see this movie and be like, you know what? Let's take a couple more chances because I think that's what this movie proves more than anything is that chances really pay off sometimes when there's amazing talent behind it. Yeah, seriously. And while, you know, Sandra Bullock completely sold the character because when you have a character that's almost entirely by herself in deep space, you know, you have to have an emotional connection with the character. And while I thought that the way that that part, like if I was reading it as a script, I would have felt like, okay, her backstory and her, our way of sympathizing with her is okay, but then Sandra Bullock's performance just makes it, like, just something else entirely. Sandra Bullock was a knockout, and a lot of people are going to be grumpy about that because people are still mad about her winning an Oscar for The Blind Side, which is understandable, but don't let Guys, your anger... <laughs> don't let your anger on one performance detract from the amazing work she put in here. She is determined, she's frightened, and she is so entirely watchable, and that's the main main concern when you go into a movie where it's going to be mainly one person for the whole thing they have you have to want to watch her you want to have to like her and there's just this innate movie star quality about her you know the thing that makes her called like america like uh what is she called i don't america, know <laughs> like america's sweetheart type thing you know the things that reese witherspoon yeah. and her get labeled as or who else, like Kate Hudson, they're American sweetheart type actresses because people just enjoy watching them. So when you put one of those types of actresses into a really demanding role, it's always interesting to see if it pays off, and it does. It Like, I just, I can't get over her performance. Yeah. It was so good. That, and to, to me, the performance of Alfonso Cuaron, like, those two just entangled together, like... Forget George Clooney, those two were the two lead stars of this of this movie, like... Can I just mention that obviously it was a visual effect. The whole movie is a visual effect. If you guys don't believe me, I don't know what to tell you. But a lot of this movie was visual effects. And that first, like, what was it? A 10-minute tracking, like tracking shot. It was a 10-minute tracking shot. It, it, it could have been longer than one of Richard Linklater's. 
Oh, without a doubt. Yeah. Without a doubt. So, I mean, and gra- much more technically granted, it, it could have been, it could have easily been other shots, like four shots or so spliced together, like he did with that one in Children of Men. But he does, it's that so set, seamless yeah. that you get caught up in it. So it's almost like exactly. it's even more impressive. Alfonso Cuaron has risen the bar for all directors in Hollywood right now. Just like even if you didn't like the movie Avatar did with James Cameron, that was James Cameron daring the even, rest of the film community to do better, and Alfonso Cuaron has come, and that's where the comparisons to Avatar stop. I, th- I think even James Cameron made like, this is the best movie set in space. Oh, without a doubt, but I mean, even just in terms of the technology, you know, the reason oh, this yeah. movie took so long to make was because Alfonso Cuaron and his team were making the equipment that can make it possible how to long, film this How movie. long were they developing this? Uh, a like, long time. I mean, long, Children yeah. of Men came out in what? 2005? 2005-ish? 2007? Yeah, it's anywhere between then. So it's been a really long gap since his last movie, and it's just, it's beautiful, and a lot of people... Have if they have a complaint about the movie, it's that the script is they call, they think it's too simplistic and the ideas are too straightforward. Yeah. But when you have a movie set in space, you know, which is such there, a high concept idea for people room for like a us, visual concept there. And also, it's okay to have simple ideas because all of his visuals are metaphorical in itself. Well, so why at, try to overstimulate look, the audience? Look at Drive as a script. That's a that's a visually. What, what what's an adjective visually stimulating film where like you would look at it on on paper as a script and you're like there's not a lot here but when you get into the way that it's edited and the cinematography and obviously the performances so yeah it just like, it all adds up so you know don't nitpick because you're determined to find an issue with a film yeah. you know the whole the whole point is this movie and maybe 12 years of slave so far this year have been the most visceral films i've seen where you just like you are full body emerged in it. Yeah. And I think that's what a really great movie can manage to do is you sit in the seat and not, like time stops. You're only thinking about that film. I don't think I've ever seen a movie where I was so focused on how I was. <laughs> oh my God. I, I think someone I talked to told me like she, she like didn't breathe for like the, the, the whole sequence where she was just like floating and they were telling her like, don't like no, concentrate yeah, on down. shorter breaths. Shorter breaths. It's oh like, my god! The first fifteen minutes, I was yeah. stuck in the first row. Oh yeah. And I was dizzy. I was I was in the third row because it's the screening. I got there a little late and it was so packed. And I was like, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna be stuck in the third row. The only time this ever happened to me was when I was watching Dinner for Schmucks. Don't even get me started on that. But <laughs> but uh, the, the I don't know if you got to see it in 3D. I didn't want to. Okay. I knew I was gonna be dizzy no matter what. I'm okay. sure it's beautiful. The thing is, is that I had no idea it was going to be 3D going to the screening. I was yeah. going to. I'm like, oh, 3D, 3D, third row. This is gonna suck. But I couldn't. That was the closest I would have gotten to an IMAX screening without actually paying for an IMAX ticket. Exactly. Uh, it's I don't I can't think of any other example where a 3D technology for a film has been so utilized, if only for the sake of debris flying in your face. The only movie I can think as of recently that had the same effect in terms of like really submerging yourself into the world was Hugo. Mars Definitely, Garcia, absolutely. Did a really good and I didn't even. The 3D. I watched it at home on demand. I didn't even see it in the theater, but That's I could completely. Right. I completely agree. I could see um, it as I was watching it. I hope with this movie that one, the Oscars look at Alfonso Cuarón as a credible actor, uh, director, because he's a genius. This may not be my personal favorite of his work just because i have like some really deep connections to a little princess and Itu mama tambien those were like my two first films of that i saw by him but those two plus harry potter and the prisoner of Azkaban, children of men those those are the only other two that i've seen so they are so diverse in the stories they tell and I think this is probably one of the most innovative minds we have in Hollywood right now. So it'd be super smart if they utilize that. He, I mean, him, and again, back to Tell Your Sleep, him and Steve McQueen repeatedly turn up, you know, high tier films, you know. So I think they really need to learn that now that he can make a big buck too, you know. Use a creative mind as well. Yeah, I think the best thing to compare this to, like to, you know, gear people to go see this in a, in a theater setting, compare it to last year with Ang Lee doing Life of Pi. I, That's true. I felt like that the awards that Life of Pi was nominated for and won 
were deserved. Like the visual effects were like that was the same kind of experience where you were just sucked into this experience. Yeah. Of, in that case, being adrift on a boat, like you know, a million times better just, than what open water was trying to do. But then gravity takes that and. It's it feels like a small movie. It's a movie that like the way that it's put together feels like it would be constrained in a small space, and then you just let it go into deep space, and it's it it is chilling. I made that point to somebody else is that in like you know in everything about this movie, it's primarily a character piece because we're following one woman, and my the most interesting thing I took from this film that it isn't about surviving it's about the will to survive yeah and i think that is one of the most like hauntingly beautiful parts of a film i've seen woman versus nature and or lack thereof uh, (laughs) yeah. um, oh just to note um i've mentioned him previously before but stephen price did the um score for this film i I was confused that this movie was gonna have a score Best the, score of the, the yeah. score, but even more so for me, the sound editing in this movie is genius. It it, it really There's is no because I space. felt like the only sound I was hearing was happening between radio conversation, like any explosions or like sounds like like you could sense the lack of friction going on through this movie. Like her yeah. trying to grasp things, like her glove would like hit something. You just hear you, a muffled thud. You like hear and it's her just ha- so much different than like a hearing. Michael Bay movie explosion. Yeah, it's. So. It just everything about this is so intricate and is so beautiful. It like I mean, I wouldn't say if this is the only film. You, if there's only one film you see this year, see this. I may give that to Twelve Years a Slave, but I'd give it to this because I haven't seen that one yet. <laughs> it's just that, in terms of like importance, I guess. But I think you know, see this film, see this film, especially if space doesn't freak you out. I mean, what if, would you give this space, as a rating? Me, well. Uh, man, I well, I know uh, Ty- Tyler reviewed it on our site, and he gave it a ten out of ten. I would, you know, it, it, uh, no no movies without its flaws. I would maybe give it like an eight point five. Oh, I would give it a nine point five out of ten <laughs> for one reason. I really think that while George Clooney was good, in my mind, it seemed Robert Downey Jr. was supposed to originally be in that role. Was he? And I could see could you imagine? it. I can see it when the some of the banter he had. So that's maybe my own. I was I was gonna say he's much more quippy. He's he's almost too quippy for George Clooney. Yeah. So I guess it was a it's personal like, disappointment. It's like it feels like they took they ripped his character from Ocean's Eleven and just put him in space. I'm like, but, all right, something happened. But I mean, realistically, <laughs> I'd give it a ten. Yeah. I thought it, there is nothing I can fault about this film. Zero. I thought I can't even say enough good things about it. Yeah. I'm the only fault I would say is say a simple it. script, but even that nine. Whatever, man. <laughs> um, so definitely go to our site and check out Tyler's review as well. He had some great th- things to say about the movie. Um, I think that's it. And that's about it. We'll see you next week where we're going to talk about some Halloween films. Maybe yeah. not in a top ten list type of way, but we're going to talk about some of, you know, horror in Hollywood. Well, you don't watch horror. I so can't. Hmm, we'll, you, we'll figure it out in the next we'll week. Fi- we'll figure it out. We'll have a variety. All righty. Well, we'll see you then. Thank see ya. you. Empty. We're gonna hit hard. Grab a hold of anything you can.